hooking up your uh, 3320 drill and 7000 series air cart to the tractor, it is recommended that you use three quarter inch couplers for your opener raise and lower circuit and your fan one and fan two circuits. As we go back down the hitch of the 3320 high flotation, the first block that we come to is the block that we use for directional control for raising and lowering our openers and also for our opener down pressure. The gauge we see on the front here is the gauge that tells us how much opener down pressure we have and this gauge is going to read the same as what the gauge in the cab reads and that is because we have a transducer located right here that is sending an electrical circuit signal back to the monitor in the cab that tells you what the pressure is here so it matches what's in the cab. The solenoid on top is the spool that reverses the flow of oil. We're leaving our openers with constant pressure. All we're doing when we flip the switch in the cab is reversing the flow of oil using this solenoid to raise and lower our openers. We also have what is called wing down pressure. The wing down pressure takes weight from the mainframe, adds it to the inner wings so that we can have better penetration. The gauge on the side here tells us what our inner wing down pressure is and the adjustment is located down here under this small black cap. If you find that your openers are not penetrating on the back side of the inner wings or if you find that the mainframe section of your drill is lifting off the ground, the mainframe section lifting off is from having too much inner wing down pressure. The opener is not penetrating at the back of the frame is from having not enough inner wing down pressure. To adjust this inner wing down pressure, we go to the front of the block, we take an Allen wrench and a 916 wrench, we loosen the jam nut off, and we then use the Allen wrench to adjust in and out to increase and decrease our inner wing down pressure which will be displayed on the gauge. and you can no longer adjust the pressure for your openers from the cab, you can temporarily get by manually until you can get a replacement box or get the box re repaired. The first thing we want to do is we want to unplug this wire from the side of the solenoid. Then using a wrench and an Allen, Allen wrench, we want to loosen the jam nut off. And we can increase and decrease our pressure, which will be displayed on this gauge on the block. However, if you do happen to do this and then you get your box repaired, make sure that you do screw this all the way back out and jam the nut down and plug your wire in. Otherwise, you will not get the full range of pressures from your uh, switch box in your cab. Adjustment of the mid-row banders to ensure engagement with the ground is done with this knob on the side. There's a hand nut, you can loosen that off, and then you simply turn the, the knob in or out in order to increase the pressure. Reasons why we'd want to increase the pressure, we have an operating range that goes up to 1325 and that's where a person's start is at the top of the range. If you look at your mid-row banders and you're seeing lots of movement in the mid-row bander disc as it goes across the ground, you should increase that pressure till the movement stops. You want that bander to be solid in the ground so that we're not spraying the fertilizer. On the other hand, we don't want to have too much pressure 
So we don't want to crank this wide open, otherwise it could damage the arms and the bearings and bushings in the mid-row banders. So we want just enough pressure to keep the thing positively engaged without too much movement. The QDA equipped 3320s have the ability to raise the frame in order to change our opener depth. This valve located on the hitch on the high flotation drills simply has to be with the openers in either the raise or the lowered position as long as there's hydraulic flow going to the block. You turn this, feet, this lever, it raises the entire frame so you can adjust the shims for all of your open, all the cylinders on all your caster and rear carrying arms. When you're done adjusting, you simply turn back into the neutral position and the single acting cylinders settle back down onto the stops and you've now effectively changed your seating depth. Each shim is equivalent to one eighth inch of seating depth change. But you have to change everyone on the drill equally to have the same depth across the frame. With the 3320s, we have the ability to lock up both the openers and the mid-row banders, and they can be locked up individually. The lever on the back side of the block on the 3320 high flotation, if we lock this valve, it locks our openers from raising and lowering, so we can lock them in the raised position. To unlock, simply open the valve. The mid-row bander block has two, op two uh, valves on the back side. When you raise the mid-row banders, simply lock out both valves and we've now locked out the mid-row banders so they'll remain in the up position and we're just using the openers. To unlock, simply reverse the direction to open them up and now our mid-row banders will function as well. High flotation hitch on the 3320. The addition of the steerable tires on the front of the seating drill allows for the use of large diameter rubber, substantially increasing flotation. Due to the location of the pull point of the pivoting hitch, there is a chance that the skewing might be a concern. In order to manage that concern, there have been hydraulic cylinders added to the hitch that can be used to keep the hitch in a centered position. The function of the hitch hydraulics is to engage and keep the hitch in the centered position when the openers are engaged in the ground. They will retract the hammers when the openers are raised. On a severe side hill, the holding pressure set in steps 3 to 8 in the operator's manual should be sufficient to hold the hitch in the straight position, even if there is some overall drill skewing. If stuck in extraction of the drill is necessary, do not pull at a greater angle than the hitch is free to rotate. There is 40 degrees each way which should be sufficient for drill extraction. The adjustment procedure for the high flotation hitch. The system will need to be adjust adjusted when operating the unit in the field because there will be turning required. It is re recommended to do this ahead of seating. First step is engage the opener depth circuit with the model 410 control box powered on. Second step is to lower the PHD openers and banders to be sure that the ball valve to the hitch cylinders are open and the cylinders are extending. When the cylinders are extended, adjust the valve per the gauge to the following starting points. step we 
will start a substantially straight path with the openers engaged in the ground and the hitch hydraulics engaged. Next we will start into a reasonable turn in the field. The hitch should break away from the center position before there is any noticeable sideways skidding of the mainframe tires. Step 6. Once the hitch is turning, continue increasing the turn until the outer wing is almost stopped, as if seating around a small obstacle. Slowly return to a substantially straight seating path. The hitch should snap back into the straight position when the hitch is about 7 to 10 degrees from straight. If the hitch snaps back too hard or too soon, decrease the pressure and try it again. If it does not snap back in soon enough, increase the pressure. Transport position for the high flotation front hitch on a 3320. The hydraulic cylinders on the hitch must be retracted during transport. Keep the model 410 control box energized to maintain openers in the raised position. If unable to keep the 410 control box energized, close the ball valve ahead of the two cylinders to keep them retracted. Once transported to the next field, simply open the ball valve back up to reactivate your hitch skewing cylinders. Failure to keep the cylinders retracted during transport will not allow the unit to turn at corners and the weight of the front of the drill, particularly in transport, is substantial and may prove to be too much for your tractor to overcome and can cause damage.